kind of like Q&A, we're going to do like a little rapid fire section. So a lot of these are yes-no questions or, you know, try and keep it to 15 seconds or thereabouts. Uh, categories, uh, some social issues. Uh, how many of you uh, have applied or are planning to apply for your right to carry permit? <laughs> Bill Brady, go Not, but my wife was actually a better hunter than I am. My wife is going to. My wife there, protect you, okay, that counts. She's definitely know the hunt, we can see Jerry Kirk. My wife, when she first met Sarah Palin, said, you know, that's nothing. I've called deer since I was a little girl in Wisconsin. So, the wife applying for it. Senator Dillon hunts with extreme prejudice. Treasure of the I got my FOIA card. Unfortunately, in the heat of a campaign, I don't see that I have time to go through the classes for concealed carry, but I intend to do that. But now that I know about Senator Dillard, I think I want to have Stephanie be on my executive security detail. <laughs> uh, we'll start at uh, the other end, Treasurer Rutha, for gambling expansion. Something you favor, do not favor. But both in terms of more licenses as well as more positions. No, I do not support uh, more licenses. The general concept of where I've been in the past is that not been supportive at all of expansion of gaming, whether it's the internet and, and so forth. I do think, though, that the idea of a Chicago land-based casino is probably something that would merit very judicious and blunt discussion. And if it were to be a part of the factor that I would look at as governor of the state of Illinois, is the fact that the State Gaming Board and not the City of Chicago would be the regulator to regulator or authority over it. But, but just, just following up on that, it would, if there was a Chicago land-based casino that you thought made sense, would that be a new license or would that have to be from an existing license? That is negotiated. Okay. Senator Diller. Thank you. Uh, on the Chicago casino, the same position as uh, the treasurer, and I don't agree with Pat Quinn on much, but I do agree with Governor Quinn in the way that the Chicago casino um, must be uh, must be regulated. Um, I have supported the agriculture components, and Senator Brady and, and Senator Treasurer Rutherford, uh, as downstaters understand, and it sometimes gets lost on those of us up here. There's an agriculture component to uh, to uh, to horse racing uh, that is very very important to a, a segment of family farmers, many of them it's historical. Um, from one generation to another, and I've supported those kinds of changes that help the agricultural component of the horse racing. Senator Brady. You know, I've never supported an expansion of gaming. I'm, I'm very concerned about the implications it has on our society, and I certainly don't think it's ever going to solve financial problems. I was adamantly opposed to... I was adamantly opposed to video poker. I think it's going to ruin our society in many ways. Uh, having video, having machines on every street corner, practically in every bar, they're running them like casinos around the state. It's a problem we're going to have to deal with. And as far as the Chicago casino goes, uh, I, I'm not sure I see any significance that I certainly couldn't support it being owned by the city of Chicago. Thank you. Uh, so with Senator Dillard, uh, Illinois' new medical marijuana law uh, people are concerned that, uh, as we have, have seen in Colorado, you start with medical marijuana legalization and you ultimately move to the legalization of recreational marijuana. Do you support uh, the new Illinois medical marijuana law, and are you concerned at all about uh, this leading to the legalization of recreational marijuana? I voted no on medical marijuana. I mean, I took my lead from law enforcement agencies, and I remember a letter vividly that I received from California Director of State Police, I voted no, and yes, uh, again, using my 12-year-old and a 10-year-old, and as a member of the Robert Crone Center for Health uh, Education Board, uh, I do worry about the uh, the creep of, uh, of beginning to legalize marijuana and having it go to stronger things. Treasurer Rutherford. I do not support the legislation that was put into law by medical marijuana. Senator I oppose it as well. Uh, moving to kind of tax and spend policy, uh, I think we heard from Senator Brady earlier in the discussion uh, in terms of support for repealing the personal and corporate income tax hike that took effect in 2011. Uh, can each of you comment on whether you would move uh, if, uh, upon election to repeal those uh, 
tax rate hikes, and we'll start with uh, Senator Brady. Yeah, under, under no circumstances uh, would I allow the legislature to extend uh, those increases. They must sunset. Uh, under no circumstances would I support a progressive, we can't use that word, a graduated income tax hike. <laughs> graduated income tax hike. Uh, and as governor, I would never allow it to be implemented if it did pass constitutionally. As I said, we've got to wake up, folks. Look at states that are moving forward. There's states that don't have a personal income tax. That's got to be our goal. No state is ever taxed its way to prosperity, and I have said repeatedly uh, that we should roll back those taxes. Uh, our caucus, uh, Senator Redonio is not here in the front row, our caucus uh, came out uh, after the Democrats did pass on the last day of session that 67% income tax increase. Again, it's a week to pay for you. We delineated a plan on how you, uh, how, how you would scale that uh, and get rid of what is allegedly a temporary tax. Thank you. Treasurer Rutherford. I just want to make it real clear. I don't want it to stay. I don't want it to stay. I don't want it to stay. Everybody clear now? And the reason I'm doing this is because I know those video cameras are back there. And somebody's going to take a little segment out of here and they're going to spin it on YouTube and all of a sudden it's going to be different than I don't want it to stay. When I'm governor in January 2015, Will this state public pension bill be found constitutional or not? Okay. Will Quinn and Madigan and Cullerton put their spending back together? I'm going to have to have the ability to negotiate. And part of it may be some kind of revenue. I think where Quinn screwed it up was January 2011 because all he did was raise money and didn't resolve the financial problem of Illinois. I don't want it to stay and put that in the video when you clip out those certain segments. Thank you. Any, any uh, different opinion in terms of approach from Treasurer Rutherford? Yeah. Senator Brady? Well, again, it comes back to build the base. I think we need a candidate who's firm on this conviction. There, we don't have a revenue problem, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a spending problem. Yeah. jobs associated with it. We're not going to get them if we keep taxing and spending the people who are in death. We must have a panel that is put together of business leaders, financial leaders, to take a top and the bottom overhaul of our tax structure uh, in this state. Uh, Representative Tracy, my running mate, a businesswoman from Quincy, is going to be very instrumental in that. You know, Jill every morning when she wakes up and Quincy looks across the river to Hannibal, Missouri, and her business competes in all 50 states, but hardly uh, in the Midwest. But uh, we have a tax code and system um, in this state that is archaic, and we need a top to bottom look at every tax, every fee, and every regulation on business and individuals in the state of Illinois. Thank you. Uh, so uh, that tax increase that we've been discussing was passed with the predicate that was going to pay down unpaid bills to state vendors and social service providers, yet since its passage, the amount of unpaid bills to vendors and social service providers has actually gone up. Uh, will you commit uh, to achieving in your first two years in office as governor that you will pay down the unpaid bills, monies owed to state vendors and social service providers? Senator Brady. Yes, in fact, uh, I've committed to bringing them current in no less than four years, but setting aside at least one fourth of the unpaid bills built into the budget to pay those off in no less than four years. Senator Diller. Been there, done that before. Inherited a billion dollar deficit as Governor Edgar's chief of staff when we left a billion and a half dollars in the state treasury without an income tax increase. And we will not, we will not the state pay cycle for 17 days. Credit rating went up, unemployment rate. What a surprise, right? When you have a state government that lives within its means, our unemployment rate was below the national average. Why wouldn't you want that kind of government again? All, almost all the time with a Democrat General Assembly. Thank you, Treasurer Rutherford. 
Well, with all respect, Governor Edgar is the one that signed the temporary income tax increase into what we call a permanent income tax increase. Now, you ask if I'm going to get it down, will I commit to that? What I'm going to commit to is I'm going to try. And I'm being honest with you. What's going to happen to the economy of the United States of America? What's going to happen with regards to the state public pension issue? What's going to happen on this Obamacare that we are now going to have to absorb? I think any politician that goes out there and says, yep, that's what I'm going to do, without giving you the condition to understand that there's a lot of things that are going to be surrounding it for them to be able to adhere to that. I'm going to try. Thank you. Uh, on the uh, spending is the problem, spending is the problem issue, um, will you support statutory spending caps that would limit state spending growth year over year to no more than inflation plus, plus population growth? Treasurer. Well, I need to see what it looks like. I mean, the idea is spending growth, yes, kind of conceptually, I'm for that. But I think a better approach to it, Dan, is do like I did as a state treasurer in Illinois. First fiscal year, you cut your budget by 2%. Second fiscal year, you cut your budget by 3%. Third fiscal year, you cut your budget by 5%. And you maintain exceedingly high standards of performance. If I can do it in my small treasurer's office, you give me a shot at big state agencies. Thank you. Uh, Senator Brady. Yeah, this is just about the president. It's about the future. Uh, years ago, I sponsored a constitutional amendment, which uh, was similar to what they did in Colorado called Tabor. Taxpayer accountability limits the rate of government spending to inflation and population growth. Uh, we need to constrict the hands of all of our politicians, be it today or in the future. And as governor, I want to leave a legacy. I want to leave a legacy that will tie the hands of future governors, regardless of who we elect, so they can't do what Roger Boyevich and Pat Quinn have done to this state. Absolutely, we need barometers put in place like Taylor that restrict spending limits. Senator Delaney. Thank you. One of the cornerstones of why I'm running for governor, and I said it in my first answer, you want a constitutional amendment if you want one game changer in state government that requires the legislature to pass a balanced budget or they don't get paid. I've been there, I've downsized the state government as a governor's chief of staff with a Democratic legislature. Uh, and uh, just to clarify, and I understand where Senator Ruth, Treasurer Ruthford is coming from, but Governor Ed, the income tax was the same on the day he left office as the day he was sworn in as governor. He campaigned before the election for continuing to have the income tax at the current level. So when I say we did it all without an income tax increase, um, that is correct. The income tax was the same when Jim Edgar began his governorship as when he left it. And we left a billion and a half dollars in the state treasury, but most importantly, the unemployment rate in Illinois was below the national average. That's something that hasn't really happened much in my adult lifetime. Thank you. Is there a follow-up? Not to follow on Governor Edgar, but he was also one of the governors who didn't make uh, GASB pension funding payments that left us with the problem we have today. It's easy to balance the budget and have more money in the bank if you don't meet the pension obligations. Uh, so it's, that's, a, that's a major problem that we're now dealing with. Instead of doing it just out of curiosity, and I, I like your idea of saying we're not paying legislators unless they balance the budget, but we, it really is up to the governor to balance the budget. The legislature passes a budget. It's then up to the governor to balance the budget. And by the way, you won't know if that budget was balanced until the Auditor General does a report two or three years later. So I, I don't know how that works. I'm curious as to how you play that out. <laughs> you, you can tell if you have a balanced budget you will have a, a statutory method to do that, um, and uh, you know, fiscal years overlap, but there is a way to do it. Other states have balanced budgets. The state of Illinois, and like Senator Brady, I haven't voted for a state budget, so I'm not the problem here. Uh, I believe I'm the solution. Um, I'm tested and I'm prepared, um, but I haven't voted for these Democrat budgets because they're out of balance. I don't like their priorities. We've really had no discussion tonight on the state's largest expenditure, which is Medicaid. We spend more on Medicaid than we do on education in the state of Illinois. 
It's not my priority. We had a, we had a question earlier on higher education. That's one of the reasons we don't have money to fund the University of Illinois, because Medicaid is out of control. Ben here, control Medicaid And then last but not least, Governor Edgar was the first governor in the state's history, um, and he had a ramp up program. And yeah, maybe the ramp up wasn't, and he said when he signed the bill, you got to look at it every year. But like an alcoholic, Jim Edgar, and I was in the Senate by this time, said, you know, we got to have a ramp. We got a pension problem that's coming. 